Who introduced you to Islam? Um, first of all, it was my brother, my brother, my oldest brother. He came. He became a Muslim about four years before me, and that's the first time I heard anything about Islam. To be honest, uh, he used to speak to me every now and again, and the little things he did say used to be, um, you know, they were very. I'd say they were very interesting, and I felt, you know, it makes a lot of sense. But I wasn't too interested in religion, if you get what I mean, at the time when I was playing football, I was at Wigan, I was scoring goals. I just wasn't interested in playing at all, I mean, into any religion really. I was brought up as a Christian, so I knew a little bit about Christianity. But um, it wasn't until I met, a, who's my wife now, and she was a Muslim, but she was born in a Muslim family. But she always knew that she couldn't be married to anybody but a Muslim. And um, I met, um, who's my wife now, and I was speaking to her about Islam. And, and she said she was Muslim, and I said my brother was a Muslim also. And, you know, a few things that he, he said to me were, you know, made sense. So um, that was one of the reasons when, after speaking to her, and she was explaining a few things about, you know, they don't believe Jesus is God. And I said, I don't believe that either. And, um, you know, it kind of led me to a stage where I got interested in wanting to know whether re religion was actually true. Whether my religion that I was brought up on was true, or Islam was true, or no religions at all were true. So I decided to go online and basically do a whole load of research of my own and see if I can make any sense of what's real, what's not, the truth from the false. So, that's what happened. So when you left Islam, did you get any criticism from those around you? Um, at first, when I first accepted Islam, people would obviously have their opinions and they would say things that I couldn't answer at the time because I didn't know much about Islam. I just knew that if you believe these things, you're, then you, you're basically a Muslim. So when I, I went through the list and I was like, okay, I actually believe these things, so okay, I'm a Muslim. So I, I made the declaration of faith and I became Muslim, but I didn't know anything at the time. All I knew was that I believed in Allah and I believed in all of the prophets as people, as human beings. So, um, yeah, it was. I did get a bit of criticism, and you know, people saying negative things, you know, about why they don't believe in religion, and I couldn't say anything back to them. But um, over the years, as I learned more and more, I'm able now to to talk back to people and explain stuff, and people, you know, they now understand a lot more things which they didn't before, and uh, I find it, you know. It's, it's nice when I can, you know, clear their understanding, you know, make, change their misconceptions and, to, and show them the real Islam and what it's really all about. And when they, really, when they hear what it's really about, they don't have anything to say. You know, when you give them an answer to one of their thoughts that they have, they don't really have anything to say. They kind of accept it. And if you obviously you spend more and more time with them, then inshallah they'd become Muslim as well. And over the years, a lot of people have become Muslim also. What was your uh, life like before Islam? Um, I'm not sure you want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't too far astray, I'd say. But um, I did used to, you know, go out every now and again um, with, with the players and stuff like that. Uh, I used to drink minimal alcohol. I've never been drunk before anyway in my life never had any tattoos or anything like that but um, I just lived my life you know tried to be as as good a person as I could be to my own set of rules if you get what I mean and um, yeah I just compared to a lot of other people I was I felt like I was one of the best people there was but um, it wasn't until obviously hearing about Islam and how you're really supposed to be when I had to change but that's the thing I didn't really have to change too many things because I wasn't too far away from what was right, if you get what I mean. So dropping alcohol wasn't difficult because I didn't really drink much anyway. If I went out, I used to drink, you know, one of the sweet drinks that tastes like Coke anyway. And then I'd drink water the rest of the night. So it was basically only because, maybe because other people were drinking. And um, I used, what else? It's just uh, obviously I didn't pray. I, never, I didn't pray. I didn't know that you had to pray. Um, yeah, I just basically lived, lived to play computer games most of the day <laughs> and um, I actually woke up, went to training, come home, had a nap 
I would play computer all day with my friend, stop for food, play some more, go to bed, and go to training. That was basically my days. And, um, and then I would travel back down to London because most of my family and my friends used to live in London. So I was from London, I used to live in Wigan. So these are the things that I used to do on a weekly basis, not you know, knowing the reality of life and not knowing what I was, my direction really. Um, some people, they think I'm not, no longer interested in football because of Islam. Um, some people think nothing of it. So they, there's, you know, there's, there's a whole range. There's one end and the other end. Some people, you know, they, they think it's okay, it's not a problem. And then you've got some people who see it as a negative and, you know, they just, they like to talk and say things negative about Islam. But but that, that comes with being a Muslim and being on the truth, so that's what happens. Oh, it's given me direction. I know now why I'm here. You know, I know why, what the purpose of life is. I didn't know that before. So, and I know what I need to do. You know, the Quran teaches us that. So um, I think it's made me more patient. You know, with, with trials that happen in life, because you know, obviously, what, what, what the trials are about. So, I think it just puts everything into perspective and puts everything in the right place. And you don't think of things, you don't go to extremes in thinking of things in the wrong way. So, like if somebody in your family dies, you don't get upset and stop believing in Allah, things like that. You know, people in life do that. And when you watch things on TV, or you watch, and, you know, the media and the way what we're living in at the moment, they make you think so many different things, you know, like you don't walk over drains because of bad luck and all this nonsense. People, they adopt these things in their life and they don't realize it. And like, I was no different. I'd do them things, you know, don't smash a mirror, you get nine years bad luck and stuff like that. And, you know, it, what happens is you know the reality of everything as it is. So then you can say that's nonsense. I was walking the other day. Um, with the team and there was a scaffold in and I was walking under and one of the players pulled me and goes don't walk under there I said get off me I walked straight under I was like it's bad luck I said there's no bad luck so they're the kind of things you know like that but in every walk of life everything even even something as small as going to the toilet you don't know what you're supposed to do if you don't know Islam you don't know how you're supposed to go to the toilet according to the way Allah made us and told us what He wants from us. You know, how are we supposed to worship Him? So, how are you supposed to be to your parents? That's, you know, that has made me more aware of how, you're spo how I'm supposed to be with my parents and the rights that everybody has upon us. You know, feeding people, giving, you know, charity, everything in every area is put things in the right place for me. And now, I, you know, I can see clearly, I can see, you know, the light switched on and I can see where the direction I'm supposed to be going. It makes things a lot easier now to be able to obviously try. But it's obviously a struggle. You've still got your struggles, you still make mistakes and ask for forgiveness, but at least I know the direction now. So that's the difference. Is it a hard time when you're fasting? Is it a hard training when you're uh, I don't, to be honest, I feel, I, feel, I feel okay. I think you get into a mindset where where you know, it's weird. If if I don't eat when it's when I'm not fasting and I go and train, so I'll feel lightheaded. I feel you know shaking a little bit sometimes after training. I think oh I need some food quickly, but for some reason Allah makes it easy for me. Like when it comes to Ramadan, the whole month, you get your mindset ready, you have your intention right, you have you you know you eat for suhoor, and then. Alhamdulillah, I'm good all day. I train, I do really hard sessions, I play a game, and I feel okay. I don't feel, you know, like I need anything. Some people don't. Um, some people struggle, but for me, I feel, I feel good. And um, I've been able to deal with it quite well, I feel. Was it hard accepting Islam? No, I think, like I said before, when I was reading about what you have to believe, I could tick each box very easily. And I was like, and then I was reading what you have to believe to be a Christian and what you have to believe to be a Muslim. And when I went through the lists in Christianity, I couldn't say, yeah, I believe that. I, could, I said, nope, 
no, I can't believe these things. But when it came to Islam, it was so straightforward and easy, I believed them, I took them on and it said afterwards, it says, if you believe all of these things, then you're already a Muslim. So just say these words and then you're a Muslim. So I was like, oh, I'm a Muslim, okay. So then it was very easy to accept Islam for me. But even when I accepted it then, I didn't know the full extent of what, what, um, what, what Islam was. It wasn't until I met Taj, who I know you've had lessons with, and he taught me very slowly about Islam, and he gave me the right books and the right CDs to listen to, and then everything became so clear from, you know, from getting the right information. That's when I realized, that's when it really kicked in, and I realized that Islam was for everybody, and I needed to give this message and give dawah to everybody. So um, that's what happened in the end. I They think they are okay. The non-Muslims, Muslims. I think they need to check who their role models should be. Really, I think uh, if you want a role model, there's no one better than Prophet Muhammad So you can't you can't have people who you know do all sorts of haram as your role model. And uh, obviously, it's uh, it's 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 sad to see that that's what the world's coming to at the moment. You know. Bad is good and good is bad for some reason and, and everywhere you go that's how it is The good's always persecuted and the bad is seen as the best people in the world for some reason So um, the advice would be just, you know, just think about how you really want to be and Do you want to be a good person or do you want to be a bad person? You know, look at it and think <coughs> Is the rappers, are the rappers You know, are they, what they're talking about they don't even do really they don't really do that stuff, so they got to realize the people that are doing that stuff are the silly people, and they only talk about that because they know people will buy it, and you know, will make them rich, and then the other people are doing the stuff that they're saying, and they're the fools because they're the ones that end up, you know, unsuccessful in this world. So um, change your role models.